But the thing is, you know, I, I feel if, you, if you've got someone that's very young and the, and the keenness is there, they shouldn't be shunned away. Even if they given, it's an easy work to do. As long as they're here, they're working on the local, even if they're just polishing this. That's why it keeps in there. If you say, no, we'll come back when you're 18 years old or whatever. You're going to lose interest. They're going to lose interest and then it's mm -hmm. gone. Because once the older people are gone, who's going to run this? Mm. You know, I mean, it's like a, 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 any club you belong to. Uh, there's older people in charge, when they go, what happens? You just close the door, switch the light off, and that's the end of that. So th this must keep running as long as possible. How's it, Jeremy? Oh. How's it going? Alright, myself, we're coming this weekend. We have Wayne posting pictures of caterpillar generators on YouTube. Right? So he's into cats a little bit. You know he's into cats. I'm wearing cats. <laughs> and you? I work for Johnson. So Johnson and Johnson. <laughs> Johnson Baby and powder. Johnson's overalls, yeah. <laughs> Baby powder, blue overalls. Each one of these coats is a good story. And this was the very first coach we bought. It was this one. It was a run up and down in Parnay. This coach, and we used to hire a mainline coach. It's the steel mainline coach. Then we got number three. That arrived. And then of course we moved to Epping. And this one arrived. And we all put money into the other swimming wheel coach. Now that coach actually came from Port Elizabeth. It was brought up specially. I think it was down here for some odd reason. But, uh, we put a bid in for it and we bought it. It wasn't much work we had to do. It was a couple of paint jobs. Okay. That's yes, the thing. Yes. Like some of them Yeah. That's why when I tell people what to do, they're like, what? Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, even for me, the, the friends that I have, none of them even consider trains as anything yeah. but a mode of transportation. So it was, when I started off liking trains, it was sort of kind of a small thing. I used to just sit at the station, um, watching the trains go by, talking to the drivers and so on. And only at the later stage when I became more aware of things that I actually start venturing out and seeing more things and so on. And coming here, it was by chance that I actually found this place. Ooh. Yeah. It was at uh, my birthday, about two or three years ago, that my brother actually told me that one of his colleagues at work when they were steam train um, they were in Cape Town. And the next day when I got to work, I was on the internet the whole morning trying to find out where this place was. Because for all I knew, steam was dead. There was nothing going on. Um, and that's how I came on to it then to go. And contacted Britain and that Saturday I was then here at the work session. That's when I started all this madness. Yeah. And even then, when I started, um, I came through that Saturday and I just wanted to see what was going on here at the station and what happened here. And I was here for about an hour or two. And then the next trip that they did was the Easter Bunny. I think it was their first Easter Bunny? Their first Easter Bunny. And on that trip already, I was in the fire lighting team. I knew nothing about the train or about what this thing did, but I was in the fire lighting team. So, I suppose, in that sense, they kind of pushed me in from the beginning. Deep end? Yes, in the deep end. We've got another interruption here. Yeah, Ken, come join us here. Come join us, got, Ken. Uh, yeah. Come tell us one of your stories. That's it. Now look at oh, this. Oh, Bali. Oh, Bali.
just the magic of it. The nostalgia of it. Not nostalgia is the wrong kind of word because nostalgia is, means that you're looking back years ago. I and mean, when I was years ago, I never had it. It's not really nostalgia for me, but it's just it's just something different. It's something you don't see every day. It's just all the moving parts, all the, the smells, the sounds. That's just magic. The sight of these things when they move, it's just magic. It's magical. Ready to eat? Yo, Papa? Hey, come on, I'll Where can I put it? Take it there, blow down cock. You open the blow down cock in it. You know how to use it, then your blood, your linkages are nice and oiled. Then you can just open it. Because then it just blows. Oh, you look at that. Yeah. And it was like everywhere. <laughs> you got the hang of it, Chris. You got the hang of it, my friend. You got the hang of it. We need some more pipes. I'm done, bro. It's gone home. So when I joined, I was actually. Quite a good looking young man and now I've, I've aged. You know, he's really trained me. You know, you know. You've sacrificed no, but I, 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 I must admit honestly that uh, I, there were a good, good bunch of people working there. In the old days, like at Cape Western, most of this work you had to do on your own. You know, there, were, there was nobody there to help you. You had to get, prepare the locomotive, clean it, lay fires, light fires, and still shovel the whole, the whole day. And, what sort of facilities do you have there? Nothing. Really? Didn't have electric lights down there. We were oh. done by torchlight. Why you look so confused, Craig? Why you look so confused? <laughs> Alright. Prepare the local for light up and to bring it into steam. Because essentially, the fire is not going to do it. He's going to expect you to do it. And there's, there's so many things that the fireman does before they actually go out that he doesn't have time to still come in light up the fire. So that's the basic idea of being a fire lighter. But it wasn't like that back in the day, that just just have to start off as a fire lighter. Yeah, back in the day, you had, to, you had to start off as while well, cleaning out the local once it comes in for repairs or whatever. And then you work your way up. And the sick, the part before being a fireman was actually a fire lighter. That was your job. You just lit fires the whole day. My ass is itching and I can't scratch it. <coughs> there was a time I could do this quite easily. Now I can't. Yeah, you're now an old man, man. Yeah, I'm old in the reading. When I first started my training, um, like St. Vincent's Brett told me to do this. Yeah. Then I did that, and then Jean Ray told me to do something else. Yeah. Then I was like, what's going on? Is this the right way? Is this the wrong way? Yeah. 
And I'll obviously I'll just put like what from I, what I understand. Mm. I'll do what I what I. That's the thing. Look, when with me for a long time when I was lighting up fires, um, I didn't really know what I was doing. I mean, they, they, they would tell me, you look into the firebox and when the fire is a certain color or when you have a certain color of a spot, that's where you throw your coal. But I would look in and I wouldn't see that, but they told me, you need to throw coal. And I, I couldn't understand it until we had that experience with the 60 year at Epic, when the only thing you see when you open the firebox is a white blank ball of heat that comes through you. Yeah, sure. but you need to look into that to actually see where you need to throw. And just that 12 hours on the food plate actually taught me how to look at a fire. Train your eye. That's the thing. And since then, it's just gotten better and better and better. Until now where I can actually say, look, Hot I don't spot, need cold any spot. help. I don't, you guys don't need to say a single thing. I'll get this locker in steam in enough time. And I still have time for breakfast as well. And now, now you're asking myself again. Is that, that's the thing. So now I'm actually going around teaching other people. So that's that's one of the good things about about Epic. <laughs> and so is his game. Show us a close up of the tin. Gas job. Smooth off. <laughs> is when we come here um, of course everybody has their their responsibilities but the main thing of the fire life is that he needs to prep the local so everything needs to be opened up and needs to be checked and cleaned so the smoke box needs to be done first well I would say the smoke box gets done first because it's the messiest and probably the most tiring of them all um, and after that is then your fire box and then doing just other standard prep filling the boiler you gotta fill the boiler, you make sure there's enough coal, you gotta trim the coal. You gotta make sure there's water in the in the tent there as well. Um, and then of course you gotta uh, lay your fire, make sure that your local is ready for light up. That you've done all your checks. That's the thing. Normally the, the boiler boiler mounts. Yeah, normally all those checks get done right at the end, just before you light up. Just before the light up. Yeah. Um, but during the course of the day there's no problem in actually going at just make sure that they, they, they are in place. Yeah. I mean, a lot of times you have people that come here and they'll fiddle with this and fiddle with that and then you've checked it, but they've changed it. Yeah. And it's now not in its correct position for a light down. So it's always best, I say, you don't think of the checks during the day. Five minutes before light up, you go around, you check everything because then you know, once you've checked it, it's set, you're gonna throw your match in, you're gonna get going now. Depending on how you light up and the method you choose, if you choose, like uh, Kenny was speaking of, Brett's method, which is the grave, that's high maintenance. I don't, I don't really like that because with that method, the basic principle is to build up your fire and then spread it, and then build it up again and then spread it. So all your hard, laborious firing work is in the beginning of your shift with you technically are still away mm. and when you get to two three o'clock in the morning so far you you move one thing from firing so hard to get the fire going and at that point your fire is so big you just have to leave it and then that's when you get tired and that's yeah. when you start you start forgetting things so fading that's why i say you know like robin said fill the old grate with coal put your wood on top throw a few shovels on top of that and then light it up then I mean, for five, six hours before you have to do anything, your fire is already going, it's settled. Um, you, you're basically just sitting around doing nothing. And then when you actually start getting tired at three, four o'clock, that's when your fire needs attention. And that's when you actually wake yourself up from yeah. fire. So, of course it depends whichever way you want it. Uh, if you like uh, working hard in the beginning of your shift, by all means do the...
Yeah. And so before every night when we light up, we have our braai. And of course, we always go, we got to buy stuff for the braai. So we started what we call a trek. So we go on a crew trek and we go up to the waterfront and we buy all our supplies and our shit and all that. We come back and we have a lekker braai. Look at you. How many conversations have you had? Quite a few. I think it's about, how many people are here? About six. There's about three conversations. No, there's about ten conversations. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm my best bridge is sleeping. <laughs> oh, dude! No, I think it's out. Then we have a prize giving ceremony for the appreciation. Yeah, the Friends of the Little Appreciation Society. It's just phased out and fizzled out a little bit, mate. Just reinstated tonight. Then it will be reinstated tonight because it was somebody's birthday on Wednesday, Thursday. So we've got a like a gift of appreciation for him on his birthday. What is it? I shall wear this tomorrow and bring this water in the tender. He's standing next to you. And then we're back in the same part. You know, if you like to put in your start on a new year. Okay? Okay, I can put a swan at the top of last year, so that's what you think. Okay, Look, the basic goal of a fire lighter is to prepare the local for light up and to bring it into steam. Because essentially, the fire is not going to. You weren't so keen. Yeah, I sort of thought, look, I did miss it. I thought about it, I thought, yeah, okay, well, let's go have a look. And when I, when I got down there and I saw these other people that were here, and they were doing all the work that I used to do, I thought, oh, this is, this is going to be much easier. And that's more, yeah, I was, I was quite happy with that. And the, the, the friendliness that there was, it was very really friendly. And okay, everybody then was sort of, didn't have much knowledge, but over time, you yeah. everybody learned. I tried to teach firelighters as much as I knew. I hope it paid off. Take it from there. 